very good evening to all and welcome back to the day 2 session so last class uh, we are discussing about uh, the introduction to your stat pro and overall uh, interface about stat pro and few questions i have uh, interacted with you some take away questions so to continue with that questions so i hope you have tried that questions uh, how to incorporate the coordinates or this value from your drawing file some kind of complex file which you have you want to import that grids or the points to stat pro so that was the last class question which we ended in the last session so i'll be carrying out that again in this day 2 i will show you a, a sample so without autocad how you are going to do that as a possible way to make a structure right so that is the first part of the day and second proceeding to the day we are going to start with a, a load calculations today so for day 2 we are going to discuss on a uh, three major topic so first of all on uh, as i said from autocad and from stat pro how you are going to uh, share the file or how you want to create the documents over there and second topic which you are going to quickly see is on a uh, a static load today we are going to discuss on the static load conditions so static load deals with your dead loads and live load how you want to consider your dead loads and live load for a building and second we are and sorry third and we are going to see some sample model so i got some few feedback from students that you need to go with a live model yes i agree to that i'll be uh, going today with the live models and i'll be explaining you how the loads are carried out and uh, how it should be discussed or how you want to apply in the real case of uh, exercise right so that is a third topic so to start with autocad versus a uh, stat pro so you want to share some file from autocad to stat pro so how it is possible so you might be seen a number of uh, links or some videos they used to do through dxf file so if you generate a autocad file and save it as dxf file and you can open it in, uh, open in the stat pro and you get your model generated over there right so few might be aware about this i agree to that but my question is now i don't have autocad i don't have a autocad then how i want to generate the model in stat pro so that is a my question right so i'll be explaining you that soon uh, then we need to know about Uh, a sample exercise how we are going to do it so here the present screen shows you a sample model of center line method where the uh, distance are measured through center to center coordinates of a building model so imagine that's a, a simple building a uh, three room set with a washroom closet is attached over here so let's say this as a center line method so the distance are measured exactly so this center line method the center line axis that's uh, going to convert into stat pro so i need this file in stat pro so i don't want the wall offset so as you see in the next picture where you see the wall offsets which is prepared in autocad so this is a model which i'm going to just uh, uh, going to show you a small sample and i'll show one complex part so how you are going to generate the complex diagram right so this is a base level so this is a basic part and then i'll go for complex structure and then today so you can see this model so that you can see this offset wall offsets are there so the wall offset is done clearly here so it's 230 mm i have taken here and you can see some columns are placed over there in the corners and these are the inner dimensions so these are inner dimensions or a drawing so it is shown on the screen and similarly we need to do this part then later on what i did so i created a file for that a center line option so we can use a line options so please avoid using polyline so there is option in autocad you might be aware about a uh, polyline options so try to avoid a polyline option rather than that you can create a layer so create a layer and make a wall name or a line solid lines and then you want to draw the structure and one more note which you want to understand is do not uh, make a line together so suppose from here to here i am drawing a single line so starting to end from start to end so as a single line 
So don't do that. So what happens in Stat Pro? It will take from here to here. So it will not consider this in between nodes. So try to avoid doing that uh, continuation line. So better than that, you can draw one by one. So one line, and then second line, and third line, and you can make a drawing completed. So this is one DXF file. So this is a format of DXF file. So from AutoCAD, we are bringing that files. So what is XF? So exchange of file. So X stands for exchange. So di diagram drawing file. So this is your drawing file. XF is exchange of file. So from one software, you're uh, changing a file. So that is called exchange of file. So the syntax here we use is dot DXF, right? So then we need to know about the coordinates. Last class, we are discussing about this coordinates, how you want to understand STAD editor. So I was discussing about you, uh, STAD editor. So STAD editor, mainly we need the coordinates. As I said, the most important points is your coordinates. So if you are aware about X, Y, Z coordinates, directly we can incorporate in the STAD editor as well. So here is one sample where the red color icon shows all your uh, nodes and respect to the axis is shown here. So what is the axis and its distance are shown in this part. And you need to complete till 12 nodes. So the so on same way, we need to complete this part in STAD editor also. And quickly we can see this uh, member. So what I said, we need a member between two nodes. So you can see the members I have highlighted with the yellow color. So how many members are there in this building? So easily we can see 13 members are there in the ground floor. So this is a plan showing you 13 members at ground levels. So again, I have given a note for beginner, those who are doing in a beginner level. So from the beginning, if you have a practice, how to draw the beam. So there is a question, how to draw the beam in uh, Stat Pro. So some students you have already worked in Stat Pro, they go in random manner. So you go in a random manner, you draw the beams, one beam here, and suddenly you go here, again, third beams you will be drawing, again, fourth beam you will be drawing. So in a random manner, you start doing the drawing. So when you go to industry, please avoid that. So we should not do that in a, a random manners. So why we should not do in a random manner? What is the issue? So what is the problem in that? The software is going to analyze the beams. So what is wrong in that? Yes, the software will analyze whatever you draw or whatever you project on the screen. The issue is when you go for numbering. So when you prepare a detailed report, or submission document to the client or for the contractor. So then there is a problem for you. So they may have the number of uh, uh, random numbers. The program shows you random numbers. So one number will be here, one number will be here. So it will not look a uh, uniform pattern. So for that, I'm giving you tips for you. So start drawing your beams, a preferable manner that is horizontal direction first. So you can complete either from the bottom or from the top corner. So draw in a horizontal manner. So first beam, second beam, third and fourth and five, six like this. So proceed in a proper manner that is horizontal and vertical manner. That will be help you to understand how you want to start drawing your drawing files. Right, clear? So same way, then proceed to the vertical members. If you see here, so eight starts from here. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13 so, so complete my vertical plans so when you project your report and it is easy to identify where is my beam numbers are coming so that is the main reason i give importance for here how we need to give a numbering properly right and proceeding further then we need to know about the load calculations how you want to do this load calculation for this building right so let's start with that so here is a part uh, for a small explanation where you know about it so in AutoCAD, you have an option called save, and then you have uh, other formats. Then you can click on DXF, and you can go for DXF file and put a proper file name, and you can save that. And then you can open your STAT Pro file quickly, and you can see import. So from import, you can file select that file name, and you can open it, and keep sure that you have Y up because we are working in Y coordinates. So this will be a height. So this is representing your height. So the plan should be selected in such manner and make sure you are keeping there in a 3D manner and you can project that. And so here are again certain tips. So please close the AutoCAD before you import. That gives you a flash of 
uh, file exchanging. So there will be a warning or error message showing you certain uh, things is active. So file is getting open actively. So at that time you cannot share a file. So you need to close your AutoCAD and then you can share your file to Stat Pro. And second thing is maintain the units. Both drawings you need to maintain the same units. So in AutoCAD you are drawing in feet and here you are converting into meter. So sometimes there is a mismatch of units also. So please avoid that mistakes. You will get a proper diagram over here. Right. So the answer for my question is how you want to convert that file. So certain case, the curved beams will not be reflecting on your Stat Pro. So in Stat Pro, it's a big challenge for us to draw the curved members. So for curved members, we need to calculate the radius. So what is the distance between these two nodes? And then I can draw the curves. Wherever I need a curved beams, I can draw it. So for drawing this curve, I need to know about the axis path. So which axis it is coming to, so quadrant. So I need to know about the quadrant, which quadrant I am going to draw. So this will help you how which angle I'm drawing the line and which quadrant this curve is coming. So according to that, we can project your curves, right? So for the, that, what we have is load calculation. So before coming to the load calculation, I like to share my screen now uh, just a minute. So because I need to show the answer for the last class question. So what I asked for you. So without AutoCAD file, how I'm going to use it, right? So let me show you that right now. Okay, I hope my screen is visible right now. Uh, Stat Pro window is visible to you all. Right, Great. So now I want to make some model here. So what I'm going to do is, so which I'm going to project over here, so what I'm going to do is your part, how without AutoCAD. So this is an AutoCAD file. I have some files over here. So I'm not going to use these files over there. So what I'm going to do is uh, blindly, I'm going to do something over here. You can watch my observation very clearly. So pay attention right now. So I'm clicking on new window. I'm clicking some uh, example day two already have file name so i'm giving you uh, sample abc file right so what i'm going to do is i'm keeping this as it is so i have something in my uh, excel so i have something over here so the base coordinates i have so what i'm going to do this base coordinates so this is the coordinates i have for my plan so i'm going to take this without help of autocad so that is my question was last class so X, Y, Z, so base ground floor access I have, either you can take from survey. So you have some, some survey report. You can generate from there the coordinates you get for the ground plan. So I get this ground plan, whatever is obtained from my survey. I copy this file. And then here is a trick for you. Click on the node. Just click it on the node and just paste it. So once you get paste, it will ask you what is column one. So it is uh, not coinciding with my Excel sheet. So I should say that node one, that is, I'm going to change that is X. So column one is your node. So that is node and this is X two and column three, this is Y. Sorry, just a minute. Yeah, X, then this is Y and this is Z. Right, so I keep this access as it is X, Y, Z. Click OK. Sorry, I didn't paste it. X, Y, and Z. So I got my grids over there, right? So what I'm going to do that, then I can use my add cursor, then I can create my beams over here. So suppose I have a multiple story building here. So I have all the data of my floors over here. You can see this part. So this is a full building access coordinates. 
so even that also i can do the same manner i can copy around uh, uh, sorry all the coordinates i can copy quickly so whatever is fully selected and you can minimize and again paste so every time you need to do this changing x and this is y and this is z click ok so you get all your coordinates to be paste over here so you can bring your structure like this also so i'll show you sample example here as i already completed this model so this is the coordinates you can see that excel sheet coordinates is here so when you see that coordinates without any autocad tools i bring my structures over here and then i complete my models in stat pro so i don't want help of autocad over here right so if you are using autocad as i said so let us do it in autocad also so here is one center line uh, part which i have made for the structure right so i want to use this diagram in uh, stat pro so what i am going to do i just close my autocad then i go back i'll create a new file again so let's say test file 03 s go ahead and then go for import click on 3d dx file where is my center line so i can select my file name and click okay y up and then click okay so now you can see my plan is over here but this is a hidden features in my cat file sorry an autocad uh, files which is hidden there my layers are off here so this is not necessary for me so i can delete that now i can go for working on this model so these are the ways we can bring the files and we can use for your exchange of files in various method excel or an uh, autocad right coming back to the class today's topic so moving back to the topics today so with the load calculations so how to do the load calculation for a building so we are aware about that normally a building has a, a roof slabs and your brick walls and then you have floor slabs and plinth beams etc now let us talk about a small sketch over here so i am going to take this small room so i am considering only this room right now so which is this part so i am going to focus on this particular dimension that is i already showed you here in this uh, sketch so 5.75 and this length is 4.25 so i am just going to take this shaded portion only so how we need to apply the loads so the rest is same procedure right so let us take this room only 5.75 and 4.25 so i show here with this load calculations so what is that load calculation how you want to do it so what we know basically that 4.25 and 5.75 so 5.75 is this side and another is 4.25 so this is a center line okay center to center distance now this side there is a door and this side is a window another window is there and imagine that this part is closed i am considering this also as closed right now so just focusing only on one room right now so how to calculate this values of loads so how i am getting 1.1 or some values which you see here how we need to do it so we know that floor height is 3 meter we know that the floor height is 3 meter so for this 3 meter we need to calculate the brick wall load so what are the brick wall load that is going to transfer it is going to transfer to your plinth beam which is at the bottom and whatever the slab you are going to rest on the top portion that is going to rest on the uh, roof beam which is on the top level if you see in your house you can see the small section in your houses where the brick uh, beams are there roof beams are there so what we are going to do we are going to do calculation with height and this room beam depth so how much depth we need to deduct it right and similar, uh, similarly for 4.2 side on other side the walls on other two sides 4.25 so how much load it is going to transfer so there is no opening provided there is no openings are provided so it is completely packed with the brick walls it's completely packed with brick walls so imagining that it's completely packed with the brick walls 
So I'm going to get 13.1 kN per meter. So the people are already have calculated your dead loads. It's right. You have already calculated your dead loads or in whatever method or in the textbook concept, whatever learned. Okay, right. So now how you want to do that in a perfect manner. So how you want to do it in the industrial standards, how, because a different consultancy, we have different kind of a correction factors. We can say that correction factors. So we adopt that correction factors from one consultancy to another consultancies. So the value is not going to buy a much quite far away. So suppose I'm considering in a consultancy called A, my answer is 13.1. Suppose some other person is working in a consultancy B. Okay. So he is going to consider a slight modification in the beam depth. So suppose he's blindly taking a, a 300 mm as maximum or 450 mm maximum or 500 mm maximum. The value is going to be quite close to within the range of like 12 to 15, we can say the range, which is not going to uh, much more it. So we need to make uh, an average value. So what is between this part? So that average value we are going to consider as a safe design, right? Because we are going to verify this in the software also, how much load it is coming. We are going to verify in software also. So that what we are saying that from different consultancy, we have slight correction factors, but concepts are same. Almost the concept, every calculations are same. But what are the adoption of corrections by their own usage? That might be a light uh, changing in the calculation part. So let's see that quickly here. So how we want to do this calculation quickly on this room. So you can see that two colors are there. One is a dark blue color that is shown as 13.1. Another one is a red color that is 11.1 .1 kilonewton per meter. And I'm taking this floor slab thickness 125, and this is a ground level. And same manner, what I'm going to do is for roof level. So for roof level, if you see in the section, as you see in the previous figure, so what is in the section? So this is a brick wall. On the top of your house, you might be seeing a parapet wall. So parapet wall generally we consider as one meter. Some kind of handrail portions or small brick uh, covering portions will be provided all over four sides. And one side, if you have a ladder, suppose you have a ladder or some kind of staircase. So ladder and staircase you are going to provide some openings you need to provide. So what happened? The staircase will going to come over here. So there will be a small opening provided, but it is not going to have some additional effect, but what is going to have effect over here? The effect is the point load, where the load, the staircase is going to rest. So at current case, I'm not considering any staircase or any ladder in my model. So in my model, I'm not considering any ladder or a staircase over here. So I've just projected a parapet wall all over four sides. But make sure if you're using any staircase or any kind of additional ladder, steel ladders you are going to project on your building. So what is the weight of this structure, which is going to be get connected to the building? So what happened? That portion will be projected as a point load. So that will be projected as a point load. So this is a later load, so which is going to rest on this part. So extra load will be taken on this particular beams. Right. I hope that is clear. Right. So right now we are not having any ladder or a staircase over here in this building, just a simple room we are considering. It. So parapet wall, we are going to get 5.1. So I'll explain you all this calculation right now. So the calculation, how it goes is from a file. So I'll show you this part. First, uh, I'll show you the calculation. Yeah. Here is the calculation. So what you see on the calculation is on uh, your brick wall loads, how you are going to do it. So how you want to calculate your brick wall loads. So in some case, how you want to do that. So here's the problem that I kind of part, excuse me. Yes, thank you. Right. So how you want to calculate this load, non-load bearing walls. So this all are comes under the non-load bearing walls. So load bearing walls are kind of shear wall or retaining wall or some kind of basement walls. So that all comes in the load bearing walls. Uh, please participants, I request you to mute getting noise at background. Okay, thank you. Excuse me.
So it's easy to understand this calculation, how you calculate your brick wall load on this particular beams. So you are taking the wall thickness, 230 mm, I'm converting into meter over here, so 0 0.230, and plastering 12 mm, outer plastering 15, and unit weight of your cement mortar, 20. And what is this? This is your floor height, 3 meter, minus your beam depth, minus your beam depth. So as I showed in your previous figure, you can quickly see that figure, so over here. So this is your floor height and then you are detecting this portion. So that is detected and this wall will be acting on this particular beam, right, fine, come back so you can see that over here. So once you calculate, you get 13.11 kN per meter as a UDL load. Now it is understand to that the brick wall loads act as a UDL load. So the brick wall, whichever you are going to keep your bricks on this particular beam, wherever the beams are going to come. So this act as a UDL. So whenever in the interview they ask you what is the unit weight of a brick wall load, so don't get a blank. Okay, it's a UDL load. So units is kilonewton per meter. Right. Similar way for openings, wherever the door or windows are coming. So what we are going to do is we are going to detect 15 percentage of the weight from the previous one. So 15 percentage is a thumb rule. So we are taking a thumb rule of 15 percentage and we are deducting from the previous load. So what is the previous load? That is 13.11. So deduct that 100 minus 15, so 85. So 0.85 into 13.11, you get 11.14 kilonewton per meter. Right, so this is clear to you. Next part, which is on the slab wall. So for slabs, how we are going to do? So for slabs, we have floor slabs and we have roof slabs. So for floor slabs, the assumptions is taken, thickness is 125 and slab thickness for, sorry, for roof slab thickness is also is same, I'm taking 125. Now what is the small difference with that? We have a unit weight of RCC, that is 25 kN per meter cube. So I'm going to take the thickness, multiply with my RCC, that is unit weight, and this is your floor finish together. This part is called as floor finish. We generally call it as floor finish. So a certain consultancy, they take this as directly one kilonewton per meter square, or some may take kilonewton 1.2, 1 1.1, 1.25, 1.5. 1 so in detailed calculation, if you want to know in a very perfect manner, suppose some client is using a tiles or marbles, or flooring tiles, something thickness is heavy. So according to that, we can detect the size over here. What is the size you are going to cover? In? So this is the size we are generally taking 12 mm and 75 mm as a floor finishing thickness and multiplying with the cement mortar. And similarly for the roof slab, when you come for the roof slab, what we are going to do is we are having a one particular case that is your DPC. So when you go for DPC, so for uh, protection from the rainwater, entering inside the slabs. So we give double thickness. So we are taking 150 mm thickness over here. So rest we get the same, that is 6.36 kN per meter square. Now it's very clear you know that kN per meter square is a, a floor area load. So it is comes in a floor area load. So it is covering the area. So that is in meter square. So the load is kN per meter square. So in the interview again, someone asked how you want to calculate the uh, floor load. So please don't say this alone. So if you are telling this alone in the interview, you are calculating only with respect to the thickness. So add, if you are given floor thickness in the question, so you need to take the floor thickness addition to your 
four finish values also. Right. So up to here, I'm going to stop it, and then I'm going to just sharing my uh, Stat Pro models. So right. So here is the part. I'm just showing you a files which is already done. Okay, so here is my model. So what I did, so I created that 4.25 and this is your size. This is 5.75 and this is 4.25. So what I did, so how we need to start this model. So first of all, you create, open your file. You can go to the job entry. As I said, you can bring your coordinates directly over here or you can use this grid. You can use this grid method and you can project there. Now, what we want to do is, so I have not changed my axis. You can convert this axis as XZ. So you can bring your model then XZ values. So why X and Z is important? So when you draw a residential building or any plan, keep that in X and Z value. So that shows you a clear picture of the building. So what is the height, what is the axis or width? So now to start with this model, so quickly I'm going to start a very fast rate in this new model. So I'm just going to repeat this structure again. So you can see very clearly the loads which we calculated here is reflecting on the screen. So self weight of the structure is available and 13.1, the load which I showed in the picture, it is available by blue color. And again, you can see 11.1. Now something is missing in my model. I'll tell you what is missing in my model. And this is the floor load. So you can see this floor load. Now, when you see in the ground floor, this axis, the most important part, so number of students do mistake here. So since the model is very simple model here, it's a one room set, you're not using any range over here. So you're using X as zero, Y as zero, Z as zero. So no changes in this part, but make sure when you have some kind of a, a different sizes and thickness of a building a slabs, I request you to understand this X range and Z range. For example, the picture which I showed uh, earlier, a full complete model. So there are different types of X value. There are different types of Z value. So you need to add that values over here, which slab you are going to select that range. You need to put it there. Then only the road uh, loads will be reflecting on the screen. If you're not using this effectively, your model is wrong. So totally it's your model is no use at all. So right. So here at the present case, we have only one simple flow slab. So we are keeping as zero, zero, zero here. But when you look on my live load, that is next part in the roof line. So you can see on the roof line. So one kilometer and I have taken the range is three, three meter. So height is now zero. So this is zero and this is three. Now what I did, I made a foundation 1.5 meter down. Now, another thing which I said, a parapet wall, which is missing on this model. So I'm going to add that parapet also over here. So let me do from the new file. I'll show you the sample demo. So how to do it. So day two, five, three, right. So I'm giving the R for repeat. So just, we can start a new file. So I'm starting a new file. Those who want to start from the beginning, you can observe my, what I'm doing. So you can later on see the recorded section also what we are doing in that part, right? So let's see, observe very quickly what we are going to do. So this is what the last class uh, we are discussed till uh, the Outlook interface, how you did it. So click on the edit. The very first step I do is X, Y, X, Z. So I change from X, Y to X, Z. And then you need to adjust these grids. If you want to adjust the grids for a decimal value, you can do that 0.55 also. But what I'm going to do, I'll just keep it as one, one meter only. Click OK one. And then the most easiest, comfortable for me, as per my convenient way, I will always prefer this part. So why I prefer this part is, so we will not do mistakes. When you have a drawing in your hand, you are looking at the drawings and you are seeing the coordinates and you are easily projecting that coordinates on the screen. So I see that the first coordinate is zero. 
So I get my grid points on the screen. The second grid point, which is I said for the first room, it's 5.75. So I get my 5.75 grid on my screen over here. Right? So what is left? The next part. So if you want to make for another axis, so that is zero and 4.25. So I get another node as on 4.25. Then second, again, this should be come for 4.75. So I'll use 5.75. And then go for 4.25. So I get my nodes here. So one such, once I get my grids, I just close it. I click on add beam. Last class I taught you this. Add beam. Click on add beam and proceed as I said the rule. Horizontals first and then verticals. Right. So wherever you are starting, that becomes a start point. This becomes an end point. Right, so always remember where your cursor is started and you're drawing a beam. So this will be a start point and this will be an end point. So I got my room structures. Another alternative way how I can do this model. So I'm just undoing it. So another way how I can do it. So I presented only two nodes, right? So I can just click on this one beam, use beam cursor, change the cursor to beam cursor. Now this is called a box selection. So when I use a box, a square box on my screen, so this is a box selection. Select this whole beams. There is an option called translation repeat. So click on that. So which direction you want to project that? You need to project in Z direction. How much meter you want to project? I need to project in 4.25 meter. How you want to connect the beams also. So I prefer links. Now click OK. So you get your models done here. So either of the way we can do this. So once you complete this model, now what I'm going to do, the second step is load calculation. So go to the load calculation. So click on general. So where is load is available? The load is available on general. So once you click on general, you can see load definitions. Click on that part. Go to load case. Right. Now, to think is to observe here is so you have two part one is load case one is called load case second one is called load pattern what pattern your load is so that is different so load case you have around dead load live load traffic temperature your gravity or your pushover analysis or uh, rain waters or dust so these are all the load types so these are all called load types and what is load pattern? So when you select one particular case or a load type, dead load, and then you add, you can give a name called dead load. Now click on that. Now once you've done that, you can see the name over here, dead load. For this case, what is the pattern? What type of pattern load is there? UDL, UVL, point load, joint loads, or coordinates loads, or some kind of a moment. So that adds something different. So once you click again on add button by selecting this dead load, add again. Now you can see the patterns. These are called the load patterns. What load patterns you need? Suppose I need a load pattern of plate loads or hydrostatic force. So I'm dealing with a, a dam structure or retaining walls or water tank. So I need to go for a, a plate loads. So I prefer a hydrostatic loads or I'm going to work on the uh, floor levels, roof flats. I'm going to give a pressure load here. Another one is the area load. Some kind of area pressures are there, uniform pressures are there. So that is there. Or member load, uniform load, concentrated force, or your uh, varying moment you want to use. So this can be used over there. The most important thing is very first step is on self-weight. So whatever the structure you create, so that has a self-weight against the gravity. So that is always in Y direction until or unless you work in a dynamic part of loading. For static condition, we use Y. So we are using for static condition today. So it's minus one only. Right. The next observant thing is on member load. So what is your member load is available? So we know that 11.1, .1, what you see on the screen. So that is your uh, two values, what you saw on the board. So that is 11.11. .11 and 13.11 so this is your udl load so which we need to add in the stat row 
So I am going to take this 13.11 and 11.14 kilonewton per meter in the start point. So going there, so we are going to add that minus 13.11. So what is minus? It's against the gravity, right? So there is no distance. Last class I show some samples. So that is your distance d1, d2 distance. How much it is moved from the origin point? So we don't have any origins here to move. The distance is not moved here. So it is zero, zero, zero. So it is uniform all over the size. So add that. Once you click, you see on the screen there thirteen point one. The next load is minus eleven point one four. Add that also. Done. Next, what is remaining? As I said, the parapet wall. So I'm going to add that parapet wall. So how to calculate this parapet wall? So parapet wall calculation is also similar. So for parapet wall, how we do is the same calculation what you calculated for brick wall. So same point two three zero plus zero point zero one two plus zero point zero one five. Now multiply with twenty into your height of your parapet wall. So rather than three meter, the parapet wall height. So height is one meter. So into one. Further that there is no beams or nothing is resting on the structure, so nothing should be minused over here. So we are taking one. So if you work out on this calculation, you get five point one kilonewton per meter. So this is the answer for parapet wall. So I am going to apply that five point one over there. So minus five point one over that. Right, done. So this is done. Now what is dead loads? So dead loads all done. Now what is live load? So create load case. Sorry. Click on case. First create the case. Change this to live load value. So what is live load now? So we have two floors. One is floor slab. One is roof slabs. So again, for roof slabs and floor slabs, you need to know about the live loads. So you need to consider the live loads as per Indian Standard Code Book. That is eight seven five part two. So I hope you have this code book. If not, you can get it from online also, or even I will share the code book for the freshers or the beginners, those who don't have this code book, or those who are going to learn the Stat Pro for the first time. So definitely, this is very very useful for you. So we are using for Indian, we are Indian Standard 875 Part Two, and there we are number of classification of buildings are there. Different types of buildings are there: a uh, commercial building, hospital building, residential buildings. Etc. Education building, so all these are there. So for that, we need to see which rooms for bedroom, kitchen, hall, or office room. What is the live load is provided? For this current exercise, I am going to take two kilonewton for floor slab per meter square and one point zero kilonewton per meter square for the roof slabs. And then we are going to consider a simple uh, dead load calculations, uh, load combination, one point five times factor is multiplied with your dead loads and live loads. So taking that considerations, so what we are going to do, we are going to go here, add the live, go to floor load. Now the most important observation here. So there is a difference between your area load, floor load, and plate load, and also surface load. So everywhere you see the units the same, kilonewton per meter square. In plate load also you see kilonewton per meter square. In surface load also you can see, but here in surface load you need to see full pressure. So here you also you can see kilonewton per meter square, or in area load, kilonewton per meter square, right? So I'm just going to give a task for you for the day. So you are going to observe what is the difference of this part. Why we are going to go for floor load, plate load, area load, right? So hold on with this question, right? So I'm going to explain later on this part. So for this current exercise, we are going to take that on floor load. So we are going to give that floor load minus two. I'm going to add that. And then roof live that is should be replaced as minus one. What is the height of the floor? It's three meter. So after three meter only my load is acting. So the minimum and the maximum value is three. So I'm getting that on the screen. Right. So all done. So we can go for first the load thirteen point one. So select this where the walls or don't have any things. So this is done. Select. Here are four options for you how to assign the loads. 
So one has selected beams, you can select that. And next for these two beams, select that. And now we are not going to touch this 5.1. The floor load is not shown here, but this is again showing you error. Right, so how we want to do this correction? Now, after doing this model, just select a box selection. Select a box selection, I'm doing again, box selection. Translation repeat, we have an option called translation repeat. You can see over here, or you can go to the geometry, you can get it over here also. Select translation repeat, which direction the building wants to move. The building wants to move in Y direction. I want to move in Y direction. What is my floor height? My floor height is three meter. Link steps and click OK. Now you should not give, this is an important point. So there are certain flags for you. So what is this flags basically is asking the user what you need to do it or what you want to repeat it. So I want to repeat all the loads or geometry properties, etc. So I don't want any loads or geometry to be uh, repeated. I need only the geometry to be repeat for three meter. So link step. So use geometry one. So the loads will not repeat there. Right. Now you can select this parapet wall quickly on all four sides. Assign to the selected beams. So you get your parapet walls on the top. Now you can check your roof live load minus one. So it's available on the top. Now quickly you can see on this orientation, you can see this yellow color icons on the screen. So there are certain icons over there. So you can select one of the icon which shows your uh, sectional view. So minus Z, if you talk about minus Z, it show one sectional view. Now current cursor is beam cursor. I can select only the beams. I cannot select my nodes. So I need to change my cursor to node cursor select the nodes cursor so don't select one by one using control button don't select one by one the shortcut trick is again box selection see on my screen select like that so your entire nodes will be selected whatever the model is whatever the model shape is your entire base nodes will be selected so keep it in section view and use node cursor select a box selection see on the screen very clearly box selection so this will not select your beams it will select only the nodes then click on your translation repeat y direction this is my origin zero and this is three meter i'm just going to give it as minus 1.5 i'm going to go below the depth of the ground floor so minus 1.5 i'm taking roughly for this model again geometry only link step okay so i got my structure there now click on support because we need to give the supports also right so for this complete model let us give a fixed support so i'll come back to this part tomorrow class different types of supports we are going to discuss presently i need to complete this uh, model sample so just i'm clicking on fixed so you can click on create you can see various types of model uh, supports there so at present i'm taking a fixed support add that so you can select again the same cursor like this assign now keep it in isometric view that is 3d view you see your model is ready so this is the way we complete your models and all the loads are applied on structure right now what is left we need to give some size right so we need to give some size to the beams and column so we need to give some size rough size to beams and columns so you can take that as a beam size so let us imagine that beam size uh, 230 by uh, 300 and column size, let us take 300, sorry, 325, right. So I'm going to take this as n values. So we're going to add this part. So going back again here. So here is option again in general click on general you have properties so last class i showed you what is the properties click on property define the size there is option called define so you need to define the size so what size i said first is your depth so depth is 300 so it is in meter so 230 mm for the beam and for column it is again 300 and depth is 325 Right, so I'm taking in meter, close this. So I want to assign this part to all the beams. So how I can do this? 
so we can group there is an option called grouping also we can do for grouping so i'll come to that later on so for simple selection so you can use this select button go beans parallel to x and being parallel to z so we need only z and x right so beans so these are all called beans so these are all called beans assigned to that now what is left the column go to the columns beans parallel to y directions right assigned to that so i am not assigning the plate so on this model i am not assigning any plate here so why i am not using the plate the answer for the question which i showed on the screen is the plate i am not taking here at present i am not taking the plate i am using the floor load i am using floor load the floor load concept is is distribute it will distribute the loads to beam so i don't want any plate or any plate thickness to be run on this model so whatever the floor load i give the floor load will be distribute the load values to the beams so for this beam the loads will be distributed so as you saw in the yield line diagram last class also student asked what is that yield line diagram so it looks like that so now the loads is distributed to your beams when you click on floor load so the stiffness is governed by the beams not by the slabs so make my word clear the stiffness is not governed by the slabs it is governed by your beams but yes when i change the option as a plate load then the stiffness matters for me so the slab stiffness is very important for me the slab will take the load and it will show the deflections everything so this case is a difference what you saw in this uh, plate load and floor load now what is area load as i we saw area load also so area load is a particular portion where the uh, load should be distributed some kind of stresses so there you go for area load and surface load come for your uh, meshing concept that is for shear wall designs we go for surface load right so coming back to the model so i'm not adding any plate here now i want to check anything is missing over here so you can click on missing data so you can click check that anything is missing here so you can select on missing attributes so no missing data is found so you can just click on analysis let me check the loads everything is done sulfate is assigned okay now sulfate is missing so i'll click on assign to view for because building is ready assign to that now you run the model you get your results done. sorry something i guess uh, property is missed yes analysis command is missed go to analyze static load condition click okay so you get your answers what are the values you want to be done you get your results so what is the load applied what is the reaction value or what is my uh, load at this particular point so you want to see this that so you can see the reactions and load values so this up to here it's completed and the last step which you want to add a load combination just go to load case click on add click on define combination you can just type 1.5 dead load plus live load and type the value here the multiplication factor 1.5 add this both so you can see the factor there click s yes. so you can check that also so just close this file and then run the analysis so that completes your dead load and live loads you can go for post processing under post processing you can see the values right so that's for the day so you can see all your values what are the shear force diagram a bending moment diagram or beam stresses what is the beam stresses are coming you can check through stress profile values also so you can see the stress values for the beam but we are not done the design so this is only an analysis report right so just we are done with only the analysis and we are getting all the reactions what are the reactions to be done so if i want to know what is the total load on this particular column what is the summation of loads on this particular column so click here click on reactions fy see only on fy so we are not considering any fx and fz so see what is there in fy 
So 1.5 times dead load plus live load, 195. So for this particular caller, 195.46 kilonewton is the load value. So that will be carried for the column design. So where you can see for the column, so 195 kilonewton load is coming. What are the moments? We need to see for biaxial moments. We have studied that. So it's called biaxial moments. So MX and Z, Z values, not on MY. So ignore FX and FZ should not be considered. FY should be taken care. And here MY should not be considered. So this should be considered. So that completes your static load calculations. So that completes your static load calculations. Right, so coming back. So let me share you some case, just last minute. Yes, so if any questions you can ask now. Sir, so I uh, left the previous class, can I see in recording? Just a minute, I'm just coming back to you. Once Sir, how to put the circular beam, sir? Yes, please. Sir, how, how to, to put the circular beam, sir? Circular beam. Okay, your question is on circular beam. Okay, so please submit your feedbacks. Uh, as a, I showed your screen, there is a QR code as well as the link is shared to you. So kindly share your uh, feedbacks. Right. So how to add circular beams? That is your question, right? So see, circular beams, you need to calculate first the radius value. How you want to do the uh, radius value? So I'm sharing the file also, just a minute. OK, fine. Just let me share the screen, just a minute. OK, uh, in meanwhile, you can drop the questions. After that, we will take the question sessions. Feedback link is given in you uh, in the chat box. So you can give your feedbacks over there. Sir, I missed the previous class. How can I see there? OK, so yeah, we will share your uh, recorded copy. OK, you can share that recorded copy. And you will be getting the link over there in a school web page, uh, the Facebook page. So you can get from there also. OK, just a minute. OK. so. Uh, you can post your questions in the chat box. We will have a discussion of questions after this meeting, right? So you can keep posting and those who have the questions, you can interact with me right now. I'm just stopping the presentation now and we'll go for discussion questions. And thank you for the participants who attend for day two. And tomorrow class, we are going to discuss on the design, as, sorry, certain cases of a, a beam grouping. We are going to discuss on beam grouping supports and then we are going to see the design inputs, how we need to go for a step-by-step -step design inputs. So these three topics will be taken care by tomorrow. Okay, so thank you for all the participants. Now we will go for discussion round. Thank you. I'm stopping the recording right now. Thank you.